Good afternoon, everybody. This is Charlie Frick from the IACD team, welcoming all of you to our IACD webinar. We're very grateful today. We have Swathi Joshi from Netflix Incident Response Team. It's going to share some of the uh, insights for security orchestration that she's seen. And also, as a uh, shameless plug, Swathi is one of our featured speakers at our Integrated Cyber Conference, May 2nd and 3rd. If you uh, haven't registered for that already, I highly recommend that you do. And with that said, I'd like to introduce Swathi and give her uh, give her the floor. So Swathi, welcome, and the uh, audience is all yours. Thank you, Charles. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I am uh, particularly excited to be here. This is my first year presenting at, presenting at and working with the IACD. Um, I want to thank Charlie and Kim for hosting the webinar and for the opportunity to talk to all of you. So my goal for this session um, are to introduce some of the concepts that guide our approach to security and specifically incident response. While we don't have time to go into details, I hope that this preview will get you thinking and I'll, um, and I'll go into our automation and orchestration details in my full talk um, at the conference in May. Um, about me, um, I'm Swati Joshi. I'm currently Senior Technical Program Manager with the Netflix Security Incident Response Team. Um, the Security Incident Response Team focuses on cybersecurity issues involving Netflix. We are part of a larger product organization under information security. We have two more functions that are part of our team also, detection engineering and threat intelligence. So all of the three um, focus areas, detection engineering, threat intelligence, and the security incident response team make up our larger organization called DNR Detection and Response. So when I think about security at Netflix, I think about it primarily in the context of our technology and our culture. In terms of technology, um, our product, the streaming service um, business logic is run on Amazon Cloud, AWS. On top of that, we have various um, environments and technologies that we work with. Our culture um, influences our approach to security quite a bit. Individual contributors are given a high degree of freedom and responsibility. We also have larger impact because we are empowered to make decisions and always encouraged to think about what's in the best interest of Netflix. So first, the strategic stuff, right? What are we trying to solve? What is our overarching goal? We should optimize security for customer joy. This is a shared company objective we should all be aligned on customer joy. So how does um, security support customer joy? In that, um, if we lose personal information or if there is impact to service, we would reduce customer joy. So there are certain functions within Netflix that will direct, um, relate directly to customer joy. And then there are other support functions that we might support customer joy indirectly, right? There might be a degree or two of separation, but we are optimizing security for customer joy is the goal. So at Netflix, we have this concept of placing bets. If there are two risky unknown paths to take, we choose one path and say, I'm placing my bet here when things are not clear or you know options could do either way you pick one so we said we are not going to prevent every single incident from happening we don't want the same incident to happen twice but we cannot prevent every incident 
So as a response team, our bet is we will focus on detecting things really quickly, responding really well, and to contain the event. Limit the blast radius from security events. Let's chat a little bit about the four main focus areas of our team. Crisis management. We see two broad categories of incidents in our environment. Cyber security related, which we, the incident response team leads, and others where we play a supporting role. It might be physical security incidents, content leaks, customer service escalations, vulnerabilities uh, that the application security leads. We seek to be the center um, of excellence for crisis management. We want to enable peer teams to lead out issues in their domain with CERT in a supporting role. Threat intelligence. If there are entities that want to harm Netflix resources, implicitly or explicitly, we want to know about it. The ability to collect valuable and actionable information related to specific things or persons likely to harm Netflix is where our focus of the intelligence program is. DFIR or digital forensics and incident response. Our goal here is to create self-service tools to enable forensics. DFIR as a service supports the incident commander who's handling incidents. It provides capabilities to collect, analyze, and store forensics data, logs, disk images, live response data, et cetera. And the last focus area for our team is detection and alerting. So rather than focus solely on prevention, we also invest in detection and response as a primary security control. Detection looks for signs and signals of malicious behavior in our system. First, we must gather information, you know, often logs, then comb through them. Then we identify who should be alerted and provide them enough context to take action. All this while making sure that false positives um, are low. So now that you know a little bit about our focus areas, I want to chat, uh, um, chat a bit about the concept of context and not control. So application developers are responsible for security of their own projects here at Netflix. Just like they're responsible for reliability and performance, they're responsible for security. We provide them, though, with tools to secure their applications and share context on why this is important. But we also share the responsibility of security. We have a corporate information security team that engages with end users. We have an application security team that engages with various other application owners um, in our ecosystem. We piggyback and leverage these existing um, relationships. You can think of these as you know, peacetime and wartime. During peacetime, we are in proactive mode. We are preparing, we are doing simulations. Um, we are working through these relationships and talking to our stakeholders. This strong base will help us during wartime when we are running incidents. So while running an incident, it's important to kind of balance between context um, and control. If you want to truly scale your incident response program, um, enabling and empowering other teams using context becomes really, really um, important. It will help different teams get on the same page quicker. This will reduce mean time to assemble um, and mean time to resolve. Mean time to assemble, how long did it take for all the key participants to gather? And mean time to resolve, how quickly they'll be able to resolve um, an incident. 
So now we want to talk to all of your stakeholders. Um, you want to evangelize and socialize um, and be effective in your, uh, in your mission. So how do we do that? We approach crisis management through tooling, training, and liaison. I call it the four enabling pillars of the program. So first, training. Um, we provide two kinds of trainings. Um, one, the first one is the incident participation training, being on call 101. We give this training to all new hires at Netflix. At the end of this training, participants will have an understanding of what it means to be on call and respond to incidents, including what is expected of them in these situations. Next up is the incident commander training. We provide this on an ad hoc basis to other members of the security team and our partner teams. Tabletops. We do a lot of cross-functional conversation style tabletops. We get the right folks in the room, throw out a scenario, and discuss how we're going to handle it. Guidelines. Establishing an effective, consistent response program also means laying a strong foundation. Here are some of the guidelines we've built. Incident severity matrix. Risks are hold at every organization is different, right? Like the type of data uh, that's important to each organization is also different. Incident severity rating will help uh, with setting the right context on what do we think is high versus medium versus low? We also have our internal crisis communications memo. Um, this is how we will push updates if it's a critical uh, situation. That you know, this is the specific SLA to respond to it. This is who uh, we need to include in the communications that we're gonna that's gonna go out. We also um, attempt to have a well-established runbook for low probability, um, you know, high impact incidents. That way, different teams are aligned. So, coming to tooling. So, we want to get ahead of the power curve, right? As we grow, there will be more incidents. So, how do we handle them? without adding a massive headcount. This is tooling and automation is an area of growth and experimentation for us. We currently use um, a few different um, technologies and systems to run incidents, but we are actively moving away uh, from these different technology to a more robust workflow. Page of Duty um, is one of our systems we use to page people. We use Jira for tracking incidents. We have our very own bot that integrates with Jira, um, Slack, and Page of Duty. So as you can see, we have Jira, Slack, um, Google Docs. There are multiple touch points here uh, while we are running an incident. The first two to three minutes of an incident are crucial. We want to reduce the cognitive load on our responders, right? All of the administrative tasks, like opening a ticket, adding the right people, creating a uh, Slack channel, setting the right severity and priority, all these need to be seamless and um, automated. So what are we doing sort of, you know, in that direction? First, we build um, a full set of requirements um, on what we want the ideal flow to look like. Then we made some build versus um, buy decisions, right? So should we build from scratch or should we buy and then tailor it heavily um, for our needs? Um, so we made a few of those decisions. Since our team works both on crisis management and digital forensics, we also had to see what's more high impact for us right now. Um, so if we were to pick between um, the two, um, 
sort of decide on how much time and priority and resources do we spend on both of these items. Um, we wanted to strike a balance. So for now, we decided that we wanted to give crisis management tooling a higher priority and continue to push for a digital forensics tooling within the realm of, you know, type of incidents that we are handling. So this is where sort of we are with our tooling right now, but we are, we are headed in, um, in the direction of building a more robust uh, workflow. Um, and we, are, we have made um, a lot of headway with specific SOAR and orchestration solutions. So to conclude, you know, technology and um, culture are yin and yang, right? Our technology stack supports new approaches to security problems and our culture enables uh, smart risk taking. So we are, you know, trying to bring both of these elements together um, for a robust incident response program. All right, that's it folks. If this is exciting to you, um, come talk to me. I'm going to be at the conference um, in May, uh, May 2nd and 3rd. Um, you know, we are always looking for stunning colleagues and I'll dig more into our orchestration and tooling in my full talk. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Swathi. And once again, just reiterating on behalf of all of us at ICD, really grateful to get these insights. And I'll also pile on and say, please register for Integrated Cyber. If you haven't, you can come see Swathi and several other uh, great speakers across our industry who have a lot of good insights on not just security automation orchestration, but also on threat intel sharing and some of the concepts that we feel we need to start looking at to address the growing threat. So with that said, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and let you know that this webinar will be made available on our YouTube channel shortly uh, after we conclude today so that if anybody came in late or missed it, you'll be able to catch up and share it with your uh, colleagues and friends. So thank you again, and we will see everybody next time.